Wake up! Wake up, wake up, it's time to rise and sing the praise of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time to rise, to rise, to sing, to, sing, to, shout, to shout, to bring him all your heart, he'll do the bigger part, if you will only make a start. It's time to give him all your heart, and only you can make a start. Wake up! Welcome to another special edition of the 7 Minutes with God today. As our common practice, in this part of the week, there is always a spot for summarizing our Sabbath school lesson quarterly. And we are now in lesson 2 of quarter number 4. The title of this week's lesson is Moses History Lesson. Before going any farther, shall we bow our heads for prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, Please be with us as we will study your words again. Enrich us, Lord, with your blessings as we will humbly accept our humanity, our nothingness without you. Lord, speak through us. Inspire us that the people listening to us will see you in us rather than seeing the physical us. We would like to ask all these things. In the loving name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our verse for consideration is found in 1 Corinthians 10, 3-4, and it says, They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Jesus. Brothers and sisters, why study history? Well, in this lesson, we will be tackling about history. This is very important for is for it establishes facts and truths, meaning there are no doubts and irregularities why we are here right now because there are records that can prove that. In the Bible, Exodus deals historically with people who really were rescued from Egypt. Thus, they really know what they're going through and why are they in a situation where they have to languish in the wilderness. However, in Deuteronomy, the situation is a bit complicated as these are still people of God stuck in the wilderness, but they are not already the pioneers or the original people who walked their way out of Egypt. So, who are these people now? Well, they are the next generation, the children and the ears of the original travelers from Egypt. Friends, history is very important to know how God has led his people in the past. This is some sort of evidence and pattern that should not be neglected, which, in the next generation, is the cause of fear for they have forgotten how in history God has led his people in numerous times against hardship and experience of downfalls. In that note, we are now ready to go to Sunday's lesson. The title is, The Ministry of Moses. Now here in Deuteronomy, one of the points here that we have to underscore was the history of Moses mediating for the people when they sinned against God. That has something to do with golden calf idol, which Moses, Moses saw when he was going down from that mountain. Moses said, Lord, please forgive the sins of the people or take me with them instead. Wow! It's a surprise deal, and Moses just displayed accountability and responsibility of a true leader. He will not absolve himself when there are errors, or just escape when there is a way out. He sink and swim with his people, and acknowledge that his leadership is a part of the reason why they may have failed. How we wish today, present-day leaders will follow the examples of Moses. Leadership is not a permission of exemption. It's a duty to God's people. So there should be sense of inclusion whatever will happen to the subordinates if the leader understands God's brilliant leadership. If you want to lead so that you will have many opportunities, exemptions, and possibility of immunity, 
from charges and occupational investigations, then making you right is pronouncing that Moses was wrong, which history will disagree with finality. Moses also modeled that fearing future due to problems and enormity of an unsure things is a, is a great sign of forgetfulness with regards to what God can do and what God has done for His people. As the common maxim goes, we only fear when we have dementia or extreme forgetfulness that God is beyond our greatest trials and challenges in life. So as we continue studying Deuteronomy, we can find more evidences how people sinned and how God taught them to repent for their sins and how God forgave them and considered them back to His fault. This process will always be a great historical evidence even to people of today that even how stubborn humanity can be, God will always honor sincere repentance and will always be there for His people. We are now ready to jump to Monday's lesson. The title is, The Ministry of Moses. The ministry of Moses during these times is how to let the people understand that the fact that they are still in the wilderness and being there for 40 years is a sign that God is not yet satisfied with the trust and faith that they have for God and they may not even understand yet the covenant of God to them. That is why they are still sporadically disobeying and they are not consistent in what they do to augment their faith in God. The content lesson that Moses is trying to emphasize here is for the people to understand why will it take 40 years for a travel that should only take a few weeks to happen. Instead, people get used to the delay than getting concerned with why was there a delay. Often, when people are disciplined, they are expected to be more cautious and more cooperative in the next few instances of life. But with the people of God in these instances with Moses, they grow not to believe anymore the promises of God. The longer they stayed in the wilderness, the longer they become stubborn. The occurrence sometimes is very true to the ministry. Sometimes we are working and following the best practices of the leaders and the church. But the only difference is, sometimes results are opposite. And this is, there is one thing that is very clear here. This is one thing that we should always be ready for. When this comes, we need to ask God for help and trust Him because this is His work and He has reasons why things like this happen. Another obvious error here is people try to disobey God's instruction of staying at the wilderness. Sometimes some people believe that when they know of few things to do, in the ministry, they can already do everything. Remember, insufficient knowledge and disobedience to the Lord can always result to failure of missionary purposes. So if we have to simplify the points here, the ministry of Moses focused on the frequent reminder to the people that they need to follow God. There is no other way but to follow God. Oftentimes, the impatience of Moses will factor in and God will also remind Moses. That is the very reason why the ministry is not only for the people, but it is also for the ministers and the leaders themselves. One thing is sure, God has His own plan and this plan is working. We need to stick with God's plan because other than God's plan are already wrong plans. If we follow a wrong plan, let's not expect to reach our great destination. Let us go now to Tuesday lesson. It is entitled, A Thousand Times More Numerous. There are instances that even God's leaders are overwhelmed or they are fatigued with the repetitious or repetitious situations. That is why here are some observations that needs our focus and attention. Observation number one, you cannot do everything. Seek help from other people. Even God advocates cooperative ministry. He saw that Adam cannot do it alone. That is why we have to work with the people so that our weaknesses will be filled in by the strengths of other people. So when you feel you are doing it all alone, you need to recourse yourself and remember there is a God. Observation number two. 
God alone brings blessings. Sometimes people working for God thinks that they are the main reason for the success of his work. This is very sad. This will start the wrong sense of importance that will put God less of a factor when in reality God alone is the reason for the success of the ministry and the one carrying it is only a tool with willingness to serve and be used. Observation number three. When you are overwhelmed, it's easy to think that it's all on you. Sometimes we just want to lead but we do not know and we have not really immersed our thoughts on the essence of leadership. We want to be leaders for fame and even just for reasons of getting favor. That is the main reason why, when real problems happen, there is overwhelming feelings because our focus is not ultimately for God's servant leadership. Observation number four. Listen to godly counsels and people who care about you. Remember, God will not usher his people to failure. That is a fact. However, at times, God's counsels are not the ones we socially expect and we socially would find enjoyment to do. For these are counsels of godly reality, so we, hes we hesitate to follow. This goes with the people who care for us. If they, re they really do, they will not give us counsels for our downfall. That is outright logic. Observation number five. When selecting leaders for God's work, don't just pick anybody. There are three adject adjectives mentioned in our lesson as the basis for choosing leaders in God's work. They should be wise leaders. That is number one. Number two, understanding leaders. And number three, knowledgeable leaders. Well, today, when we choose our leaders, do we still apply these three or we just go by popularity, debt of gratitude, or forthcoming favors? Well, by doing so, we outrightly disobey God's criteria. Observation number six. Listen to the leadership. It is the work of the people, the subordinates, to follow their leaders in church, and they should not mistakenly do the function of questioning the leadership in their own comfort, for it is God's duty to place and remove leaders and to some extent put judgment on the deeds of the leaders. Observation number seven, organization is divine. This includes the church. So respect the church because it is an ordained structure or emblem of God's work and representation. Disrespect to the church is tantamount to disrespecting God. Remember the church is the physical representation of God in our midst. Observation number eight, if it's hard, bring it to God. Compelling self to do everything as a leader is in itself a distortion of God's plan wherein leaders should work hand in hand with God as partners, not as solitary warriors who will complain of fatigue at the end. Observation number nine and the last for this moment. List or listen to instructions. Always remember, in any mission, in any test, or in any evaluation, the most important item is not any of the content of these things, but rather the instructions how to do these things. Doing everything right with the wrong understanding of the instructions is never right after all. What we can see in this part of the lesson, dear brothers and sisters, is that when Moses was reminding the people of how to follow God, he was also reminded by God how to become a good leader. Remember, God's reminders are not only for the congregation or for the audiences. It is also for our leaders. Here is now our Wednesday lesson. The title is Kaddish Barnea. Let us not have the grasshopper syndrome. And what is this grasshopper syndrome? When Moses sent spies into Canaan, most of them came back saying it is impossible to intrude Canaan because walls are too high as com and compared to the great and big Canaanites, they will just look like grasshoppers. Well, you can imagine the size difference between humans and grasshoppers, but that is the description they gave. Well, dear brothers and sisters, if we forget who our leader is, which is God, 
then we may always compare ourselves to a grasshopper. That is the most dangerous thing that Christians will do. They will tell the world that they are Christians, but their faith is as big as a grasshopper. There is no Christianity in this kind of disposition. Caleb and Joshua, the faithful spies, reminded the, reminded the people that God has never failed them in the past. God can do miracles and God can even let them win even if they are outnumbered. Sometimes, we don't have to see our mission in the physicality of its appearance because we will just see giants. We have to see it in the greatness of faith wherein we can see God doing great things for us. Remember, fear and depression alters our mission. That is why many churches suffer negativities from within because many of its leaders think of the impossible by virtue of what man can do, what leaders can do, and they forget that it should not be in this perspective that they should judge God's work because it should be viewed as what God can do and with God, there are no impossibilities. The greatest error of our leadership execution today is we judge the Lord's work according to what is done usually by people, according to human capacity. The problem is we cannot compare God with humans. That is a far cry. Because God can do wonders and He will do miracles to proclaim truth and faith, one thing that humans cannot do. Now, the Thursday lesson. The title is Iniquity of the Amorites. This is a stern reminder for all people reading the Bible and believes that some verses therein are actually not believable or contextually inadequate. Let us always remember, everything that was written in the Bible are divinely inspired and God has a purpose for its existence. May it be the better sounding Bible contents and even those that are hard reproof and heavy statements therein, they are still God's words and these are inspired scriptures. It will take faith to acknowledge that everything in the Bible is correct and purposive. When God prophesied things that are not so good to happen, why do you think God will not intervene for it not to happen? Such a very catchy question. Well, we are missing the point. These things happen because of a detour in faith and it also happened to prove prophecy to be correct. When these things happen, the next prophesied points will be how God delivered them from such iniquities and there goes the repentance and the restoration of their faith to God. There are records in the Bible wherein the iniquities of the people reach a point of no return. And you can see that they are also condemned, such as what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. However, if we will follow the historical events, there are really efforts of reminders, efforts of trying to route them back to the truth, to God. Some successfully went back, but some also suffered God's wrath. This means if we continue to go against God, the day of judgment will really arrive, and God will really execute that one. Dear friends, we are now in the summary of our lesson. Moses' history lesson is all about proof of what faith can do to people who trust God. This is a frequent reminder how the faithful were rewarded and how the unfaithful were thoroughly given chances till the day wherein the point of no return arrives and God has to do what he does, not that he really wanted to do it, but because this is judgment to those who have iniquities which have not repented. History will repeat itself and today we are frequently reminded that is why let us restore our faith in God or else we will also be recipients of God's justice. This is the 7 Minutes with God special edition tackling lesson number 2 of the 4th quarter of our lesson quarterly for the Sabbath school. May God's message persist to enter our hearts and cultivate a greater faith, one that will surely endure till God comes again. Once again, this is Brother Noy Gonzaga, your online inspirational evangelist, and this is our summary of God's lesson for this week in 7 Minutes.
Have a great day, everyone. Wake up, wake up. It's time to rise and sing the praise of Jesus. Alleluia, alleluia. It's time to rise, to rise, to sing, to sing, to shout, to, shout, to bring him all your heart. He'll do the bigger part if you will only make a start. Wake up! Wake up!